Hey there, my name's Pete and I like pictures. Welcome to, uh, I, I actually have no idea what this video will be about. <laughs> I just sat down and thought I want to make a video. No, this will be a shorter version of the screencast of me editing a shot because I watched a couple of um, screencasts uh, about, with people um, developing photos in in Lightroom lately and for me this was always 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 incredibly helpful not to to well ne necessarily learn new techniques but just because to to get there the people the, those guys approach because they talked a lot about what they see and um, maybe this will be helpful for you as well I checked my videos on on light to, uh, on on YouTube and I saw that uh, the screencasts seem to be uh, the videos with uh, with most interest to people. So why not make one again? This one, this one will probably not be. Sorry, drinking coffee. Um, too long, so that you can watch it. You can make yourself a coffee and watch it. <laughs> okay, well, Lightroom. This is still Lightroom five point seven point one doesn't matter what I see is um, this is a shot I made let me check when it was it was last week something like that yeah 21st of October so last week and it was a pretty misty morning <laughs> and um, I got some annoying person um, telling me we have to go out shooting it's it's foggy. Come on, it's it's early in the morning. No, you're not gonna shoot. Okay, we did that. So now there's a little forest behind my house, or the house I live, not my house. And so we went there. And so this is one of those shots. And at first glance, it screams for staying high contrast scenery. And what I try to do, and that is something. Um, because I love post-processing. I love developing in Lightroom. I want to want to be able to do most. Or like I want to have as much as in, as much information as ever possible in the shot. So I try to squeeze in as much information as ever possible. And you see, if you look at the histogram, it fits. There are no crushed blacks, there are no blown out highlights. And um, also, you if you check the settings, ISO 125, that is indicates that I was in some kind of auto mode. Yes, in that case, I was in AV mode, the aperture priority mode. That is really that is something I use very, very often. I, I have been told that for many people, this seems to be tricky. I actually, I don't get why. <laughs> Some people struggle with that, um, but this will be covered in the series about digital photography, how to work with the AV mode. For me, this is just the perfect um, thing. I have full control over the picture. I can do whatever I want and I don't really have to bother. And if everything fails, I'll still end up with a decent shot. And I'm quick. So that is the AV mode. Um, <laughs> the advantages. And you see, ISO 125 is still very low. Lower I, the lower the ISO, the better for the picture quality. Not necessarily, because some cameras do have an ISO of 50, which is lower than 100. But 50, most of the time, is not real. It's just like a processed version. So ISO 100 is probably the best with most cameras, the best setting if you if you go for quality. Sometimes it's not possible. Whatever. We were at, or I was at, a focal length of 28 millimeter. So um, I know I used the um, 28 135 lens, so it was a full wide angle. And with that lens, f16 to get as much depth of field as ever possible, and 1 14th of a second. One fourteenth of a second is something I know I can still um, shoot freehand 
even with an unstabilized lens, uh, at, at, especially at 28 millimeter. So 1 50th of a second is not a big problem for me. Might be different for you, might be different with your camera. I know that um, I shoot safely go with um, up to 100, um, 1 25th of a second or something. Um, depends always on, on, of course, on the focal length. So, okay, what do we want to do? Uh, maybe one thing, I shot with the landscape profile in my camera, so I imported that shot also with the camera landscape. And you will see a difference if we go to Adobe Standard, this is what Lightroom does by default, you see a difference in the photo. Go to Faithful, Go to landscape. This is pretty exactly how the shot looked like on my display. Go neutral. See, we can, it doesn't matter. You just take what looks best for you. And I have um, three other presets in here. I found them on the web for free and legal. Just saying. <laughs> we can play around. See, that is a really high contrast thing. So, um, I go, well, you can go with faithful or standard. Standard gives me a bit less contrast. I think I'll go with standard. I like that better for what I want to achieve with that shot. But you see, as soon uh, as I'm, as soon as I change um, to a different uh, profile, the histogram changes. So if I'm, and standard mode, I uh, the blacks got crushed a bit. So you see the profile changes the um, tone curve, not the tone curve, but the tone curve in your camera. So that is something good to know that you can change the look of your photo already with changing the profile. And just simply choose, and you see also the uh, the the colors get affected. If we if we go to landscape, you see it's slightly bluish uh, because landscape profile pushes the blues and greens. But I think I'll go with yeah, I'll go with standard because it gives me a bit more um, detail in the shadow area. It doesn't really matter because. It's a raw file. <laughs> we can change that anyway, but it gives me a good base. So what I want to do in the first step is to get rid of those crushed blacks. I want to raise the uh, brightness of the shadows anyway. So that's what I do now. So we'll bring the shadows here. See that mountain. And still some crushed blacks. So I'll raise the raise the blacks a tad in case it works. So just to the point that they don't cr crush anymore. You can zoom in. Oops, looks good, I'd say. All right, now the sky it wasn't really that i want that a bit darker just a tad darker and you see um here is the highlight area here the white area i don't want, really want real whites that is that is uh, something with foggy days with misty days it's we don't have real whites usually we don't have really deep black shadows because the light is so diffuse it fills up the shadows and in that case, of course, we do have a quite dark shadows because it was backlit, but it still has this this feel. So um, I'm gonna lower the whites to bring them into the highlight area. And you see the overall picture brightness doesn't really change too much, but the picture gets much softer. And that's what we want, or I want, with a um, fog picture. And we can lower the contrast to get more information. See that, if you look at the histogram, if we lower the contrast, um, the histogram gets squeezed. And if we 
increase the contrast, the, the histogram gets stretched more towards the left and right end. So I like that. I want, I want it to be that way. Of course, you see now it gets pretty dull. But it still is a great base picture because we have more. We have information everywhere. We can work with that information. And that is the great thing with raw files. We have a lot of information and we can work with that. If I would have shot with JPEG, this wouldn't have been possible in that way because JPEG doesn't hold as much information as raw files do. So, okay. I'm going to lower the blacks a bit to stretch it out a bit more. And I'll probably you see the highlights shifted more towards the middle. So I'll raise, oops, what did I do? I'll raise the whites. So it gets me really a kind of dull feeling. That's what I want in that picture. So that is a base I like. And whenever I come to a stage where I say, okay, this is a step in my editing, or I want to be able to go back to that step anytime, I'll make a snapshot. I can give it a name or just use the time and date. I'll just go with time and date. Okay. Looks good. So still the picture looks very dull. What can we do? In that case, I would raise the clarity a tad. Like so, or no, let's do it differently. Lower the quality, uh, clarity to get some sort of a glow in here. It's a really there's a misty feel in that in that shot. A bit more, really lo lower it. I lower it to about yeah 22, 21, something like that. So I have this smooth thing going on in the picture. The thing is now it's smooth everywhere. It looks like smeared or something, or a shot through sh through a, a fog glass or something. And I want to reintroduce the uh, clarity. And clarity is nothing else than local contrast in certain areas. So I'll take the adjustment brush, reset the clarity, or just push it up a bit. Like, I don't know, let's go up to as high as 50. Let's say 50. I want 50. And just paint in. Clarity. See, suddenly the picture gets alive. Let's paint it in here. Maybe on, on the trunk of the tree. Doesn't have too much effect here. Maybe here as well, something like that. And we can even play because that is still activated. We can still play with the other sliders. Maybe raise the contrast tad. Well, like 50 as well. Or lower it again. So you see this brighter again. No, but I think I, li I like that. And I want a bit of clarity here as well. Really paint in, make it organic. Just, just sterile. That is something I really like with Lightroom is that I have to be sloppy. If you're in Photoshop or, or other um, software that allows you to really mask out things, yeah, things very easily get too clean. And that's what I love with Lightroom. And I hated it in the beginning. But that, things like the, the adjustment brush, you have to be sloppy, kind of. But that gives your pictures a certain, yeah, I don't know. It, it gives an, an organic feel. Okay, click on done. And I'll use a second instance of the adjustment brush. And if you want to know how to use the adjustment brush, I made a video about the adjustment brush uh, with all these settings explained. And in that case, I will just play with clarity. I can even see paint in clarity to define the picture a bit more. 
to create some some sort of depth in the picture to create some um, texture and some so I'm gonna go to the trunk of the tree you could really uh, like fog can paint in like fog effects How I see it, things like the adjustment brush are there to simply enhance what is already there. Because you can create something new. You can create some lighting effects, yes, by brightening up areas or darkening areas. But for me, it's really like, yeah, the name says it. It's a brush, like a paintbrush. And you can create things in here and that's something i'm gonna zoom in you see those bright spots that is where i was sloppy and that's where uh that's what i don't want to and i click on show selected mask overlay with the brush still selected and by holding down the alt key option on mac i'll just delete these areas and it doesn't work why doesn't it work Because it's probably also yes on this other oops alt key hold the alt key option on Mac it's also on the other brush the other instance of the brush I'm gonna zoom out I'm still sloppy here I'm gonna remove that so that I don't have these bright spots that are really distracting. But now I have this border. So I sometimes sloppy is not good. In that case, we really see what's going on and we don't want that. I want to hide. We can add, uh, change the feathering of that brush a bit. And maybe do it this way all right uh, still I'm gonna zoom in oops what did I do I did something I don't know what I did uh, survey no fuck it I don't know sorry um, I gotta beep that out I guess if I find it in editing this this um this video <laughs> no swearing in my videos no swearing um okay <laughs> fine now i'm distracted shocked by my own potty mouth no let's go the other way just in that case we probably have to be more accurate to um smooth that out and not to see the the fringing of the contrast uh, the um, clarity brush see how much I am distracted by my own swearing okay I think that works what I want to do is to paint a little bit of contrast in here just contrast Bring that back, raise the contrast and the uh, in the brush settings, raise the contrast, yes, you can paint in here as well, no that, I don't want it on, on the other side, that's too much, just undid it. painting things in really like that we can also uh, paint sharpness in if we want to local sharpness we can use something here bam 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 no I don't want that see by holding by, by just mouse over ring those um, 
those knobs, buttons, or however, however you might call them, you see the mask. So stay on them here. And I'm going to move that. So you see which area gets affected. This is the temporary, temporary view. And if you want to have uh, it on all of the time, and you see how sloppy I was. But I think it works. If it doesn't work, tell me. <laughs> okay. I think that is another step that we can use as a snapshot. And what I see now is it, it, here, same. I'm going to remove that. There's always some trial and error thingy. Activate that. Hold down the Alt key, Option on Mac, and remove that and obviously it was affected yes by another instance of the brush as well and this one obviously as well all right okay i did just some minor adjustments and that's what i want to do i want to i do i don't want to keep the last snapshot so what I can do is either delete that snapshot or just say update with current settings. So the settings now will be copying that and we keep that snapshot. That's a really useful thing and I have to take another sip of coffee before it gets cold. You don't want that and I don't want that. So I think this is already a working shot. Maybe I would, I would brighten up that part of the trunk here a bit it distracts me that's by the way that is my personal approach to um, photo editing post processing or however however you might call it I want to guide my view the viewers attention to parts that I want because sometimes it's simply not possible in camera most of the time it's it's not really possible to do that um, in a way, or in that way, as I can do that in post-processing. So, yeah, I think that's a working shot. Okay, same here, update with current settings. How can we enhance this? My problem is, what do I want? I see I have these lines going in there. So the viewer's eye gets sucked into that point here, those trees, gets framed by those. What can we do? How can we enhance that? Let me check whether I know what. It's, it's the original crop. So I love vignettes. So what I do is I'll take the radial filter and just drag up a radial here or an ellipse we can even turn that twist that a bit like so and just darken the outside a tad even a lot almost one f-stop and we can raise the clarity a bit so it doesn't get too apparent. I have no problems with really apparent vignettes. I think that's the artistic freedom. I know I've I've been told that during my during my training days in in, in video production, because vignettes are some. It's just it's just a very cheesy and easy thing to guide the viewer's attention to darken parts that you don't want to pe want people to look too close at but it's it's just common practice it's everyone does it everyone does it the good ones do it in a way that are that it's not so apparent to you if you look at it closely and if you know they're there you see them and i saw that in in in, in hollywood blockbusters um like really heavy vignettes and you just don't see them because people use them in a way that you don't see them it's like what was one of those movies i think it's harry potter or something and so it was just it was just it was 
I've never seen such a extreme vignette in my life, but it just fits. So if it fits, if it helps the picture, if it helps to tell your story, if, if it helps to sell your shot, then do it. Okay. And I want to just do some slight little adjustments here. Just maybe brighten parts a bit. So just um, sculpture. I, I, I like to call it to sculpt the landscape. Now we add some clarity. Maybe push it, push it up. Bring that down. And maybe I'll crop that capture a tad on the right side. And push it up. So I think that's it. I think that's the shot. I want to post maybe it helped you a bit to watch that it's been longer as i than i thought it will be because i was rambling bye till next time